I got a lot to do in a little bit of time. Somebody hand me my notebook and my Bible. I got a lot to do in a little bit of time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, word my mouth tonight. That is my only prayer. You word my mouth tonight. Let me speak what you have called me to say. Nothing more and nothing less. God, I rebuke the devourer. I rebuke the deceiver of the brethren. I command him to get off of this property. I command him to move out of this building. That any seats that demons have thought they could reside in, I, I evict you in the name of Jesus. I pray that you open the ear of the hearer. <sighs> open the ear of the hearer. So that they not only hear the word, but do it also. In Jesus' name. Amen. I thought I was going to start chill tonight, but clearly that's not going to happen. Can you give me more volume on my mic, please? Thank you, Lord. Again, I got a lot to do in a little bit of time. Perfect. A lot to do in a little bit of time to do it in. I got to conserve my voice. When God dropped it in my spirit to do another Switch Sunday, he instantly gave me this message, not knowing what we were about to cross into as a body of Christ, particularly the body of Christ in America, where we have seen the vestiges of perversion rising up in our midst. And um, from, there's, from people who are big names to people that you don't even know exist, there's been revelations of particularly in the area of sexual perversion that these things have been happening. And, and my brother, Elder John, sent me a video of someone preaching about prophesying about this happening but also talking about perversions of doctrines i've been preaching and talking about that for what most of this year and god has given me a strong word but it's a word that will be the catalyst for the next direction that you're going to go amen if you choose here's the thing if you choose to hold on to it if you choose to hear it, and this is what the this is the prophetic part, and then he's gonna then we're gonna dig into some scripture. I have a feeling I got six points. I'm, I have a feeling I'll make it through two, but that's all right. God is calling for a higher level of maturity in this next season. Everybody say maturity. The winds of change and the wind of God are blowing and revealing the wheat and the tares. This maturity requires a deeper humility, a heart of repentance and reconciliation with God and with our brothers and sisters, and an understanding of the responsibility we carry as Christians who are led by the power and leadership of the Holy Spirit. What is, so, so, that, so that was what God downloaded directly to, to me to tell you. What are you saying? That it's time for the church to grow up. I want to say that again. It is time for the church to grow up. We have become like orphans running from place to place, from conference to conference, from prophet to prophet, from preacher to preacher, trying to find something that's already been inside of us the entire time. And in the times that we're walking in the world, it's not just looking at what you can do, what you can produce, but they're also looking at who you are. They don't care how many tongues you can speak in. They don't care about how many legs you have made grown back. They don't care about the, they, they don't, they, okay, yes, miracle signs and wonders follow those who believe. But they want to see the belief that you say you have. And in this day and age, we are, we are talking a good talk. We talk a good game, but we can't back it up. Because people refuse to grow up. People refuse to let the word not only affirm them, but also correct them. So God is looking for a generation of glory carriers. He is looking for people to rise up and be carriers of his glory. Go with me to Second Peter. I know to my church, the scripture is going to sound real familiar. Yes, 
Lord. Second Peter, the first chapter, we're going to look at the first through fourth verse. Thank you, Lord. It says this, Simon Peter, a bond servant, reading from the New King James, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ to those who have attained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness which through the knowledge of him were called by us by glory and virtue. Say glory and virtue. Say it like you got it. Glory and virtue. All right, let's keep going. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Let's go to, let's look at verse three, glory and virtue. I had you say those for a reason. The word glory comes from the Greek word doxa. Doxa means opinion, judgment, view, estimate, whether good or bad, concerning someone, splendor, brightness, majesty, magnificence, grace, or a most glorious condition or exalted state. Can, can I give you what the revelation that God gave me all the way back in May? Let me share this with you. That if you think glory is just signs and wonders and manifestations, you've only hit the tip of the iceberg. Remember, God said, church, church got to grow up, right? I'm going to help you grow up. Those are the end result of what glory is. Glory is God's good opinion of you. The glory is God's opinion, God's good opinion of you. He, when, when you have the glory of God, he favors you enough to trust you with his power. But we run after the manifestation, the end result, not realizing that to become, to become a carrier of his glory, we have to become like God. Yes. Yes. Not like God in power, but like God in nature. And we're wondering why we're having difficulty getting to the point of revival, which let me give you some clarity on that. Revival is not just a corporate experience. It is you changing to change other people. And your fire, and, it, and your fire connects with other people's fire to set the whole world on fire. So the problem is if you don't want, if quit praying for revival if you don't want to change. Quit asking God to heal and deliver you and fill you if you really don't want it to happen. Because there's some other people who are crying out in the prayer closet. There's other people in other countries who understand the worth of this glory, who understand the price that has to be paid and who will take it freely. Don't waste God's time. Virtue, in this context, is the Greek word arete, meaning a virtuous course of thought, feeling and action, or any particular moral excellence as modesty or purity. I'm really probably going to preach only two scriptures and we're going to let the Lord have his way. You cannot carry the glory of God. You cannot walk in the, you can, you can get the, there's, you can get the warm tingles, you can feel his glory, but there's a difference between feeling something and it being a part of you. And we have, we have raised up a generation, this is something I've had to repent for, that we have raised up a generation who, who is so addicted to the power of God. They have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. And that power is not the gifts that you have, it's the lordship of God. You can, what does the Bible say? You can get, a, get up to heaven and you say, God, I did all this stuff in your name. You say, I don't know you. We have a lot of people running around who can do all these things because the gifts and callings are given without repentance. But the problem is they don't know God. Yes. They get a touch, get a high for three weeks, and as soon as adversity comes, they run. So God is looking for people who are willing to carry his glory. 
He is looking for people who are willing to, to humble themselves in his sight. He's looking for people who don't care about how the rest of the boat moving. If the boat's not moving in the right direction, I'm going to get off the boat and go the way God told me to go, and I'll catch you on the other side. Because we're in a season now that everyone wants to make their own truth. Everyone wants to do things their own way, and no one wants to follow Yahweh. No one wants to follow the word of God. I'm like, why am I preaching this here? Why can't I preach this at home? This is a good at home message, God. It's like this, this, this is a good Lancaster message. But God said, no, they need to hear it here. Here's why, why, why I have to release it here. Because God is transitioning you all into a newness. Let me be very specific. God is transitioning you to see him in a fresh way. God is transitioning you to see him in a fresh way that is rooted and grounded. Here's the thing about adversity and storms. They make trees stronger. Because they cling to the ground. They cling to the earth more. And this church has gone through some things. I don't talk to Pastor Call. There have been some things we've gone through personally. But, but, but some of y'all made the decision, rather than falling apart like you did the last time, I'm going to stand. Yeah. And, but as you stand, you're going to realize there's things that you, that you thought, things that you knew, things that you believed that have to change so you can grow. There's a reason why some folk left. They needed to go. They weren't, they weren't ready for the next stage. They didn't want to let some things die. That's the battle of the church. People don't want, people make idols out of their sin. They make idols out of their ideologies. They make idols out of those things that do not line up with God and try to use the word of God to, to excuse it. And then they're running, then eventually God gives them grace, but eventually they start running a strange fire. That's why you don't see some people that used to be here because some of them run around in some strange fire. But God's called you. And I'm preaching to the remnant that's watching this. God has called you to carry the glory, the doxa, the nature of God. When you learn his nature, when you learn his heart, you will understand the significance and the worth of his power. When you know his nature, when you know his ways, when you have intimate relationship with him, and let me clarify this one too, that intimacy is not sexual. Intimacy is not sexual. I mean, people always make those those kind of that. No, you can you can you can have you can have sex with somebody and not care about them, not want relationship with them. But intimacy comes from connection and friendship. How can, the difference between a child and a son, y'all remember what I preached last year, the, the difference between a child and a son is that a son has relationship and can be trusted with the inheritance. So we got a lot of kids, a lot of orphans trying to tell people how to be sons, and that's not how it works. You must have relationship with God. You must have covenant with God to understand the nature of God because that because it's our portion. Deliverance is the children's bread. The power is, is our portion because we're connected to him. If I know him, I, he trusts me with what he's given me, and I can go out and do what I'm called to do. I can make miracles happen, signs and wonders, not because of me, because I have relationship and connection with him but we've missed that go to Acts I'm almost done I got I got all these points I ain't about to touch all, touch the remaining four let's go to Acts the 8th chapter this, this is about to be somebody's deliverance I want to tell you what this point is glory chasers versus glory carriers Ooh, I'm about to make some fun mad, but I don't care. <laughs> a man named Simon 
had previously practiced sorcery in that city and amazed the Samaritan people while claiming to be somebody great. They all paid attention to him from the least of them to the greatest and they said this man is called the great power of God. They were attentive to him because he had amazed them with his sorceries for a long time. I don't know why the Holy Spirit told me to stop there but I need to stop there. Again, the, the devil can come as the angel of light. The devil can come as the angel of light. He can replicate everything that God does, but it won't have the same fruit. A witch doctor can heal somebody, but the price is you. Where are you going with this, Pastor? There are some people who are running around here saying they got the Holy Ghost saying that they have the power of God they can make people fly across the room but check the fruit check check the fruit check because here's the thing when the hope when you have a true encounter with the Holy Spirit that changes you It changes you. When you, you are transformed, you are, you are transfigured, you are renewed. There's something different about your countenance. It doesn't cause more pain, it causes freedom, and it helps you deal with the next adversity that you have to deal with. Amen. Let me keep reading. But when they believed Philip as he proclaimed the good news about the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Even Simon himself believed, and after he was baptized, he followed Philip everywhere and was amazed as he observed the signs and great miracles that were being performed. When the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. After they were down there, they prayed for them so the Samaritans might receive the Holy Spirit because he had not yet come down on any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that spirit, watch this, was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money saying, give me this power also so that anyone I lay hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter told him, may your silver be destroyed with you because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this matter because your heart is not right before God. Therefore, repent of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible your heart's intent may be forgiven for I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by wickedness pray to the Lord for me Simon replied so that nothing you have said may happen to me let me give you the difference between a glory chaser and a glory carrier A glory chaser will do anything that it takes to not pay the price to learn the nature of God. They will sit up in church. They'll be the first one if, 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 if people, if a certain person show up, here they come. And y'all know I'm right. Mm-hmm. They, they get their high, they get their fix. Then you don't see them no more. Until the next person shows up. If it, but then the life that they lead does not equal the glory that was given to them. While a glory carrier takes the impartation doesn't how much how much do I have to pay for this? It, that's not a question that comes out their mouth. God, what do I what needs to die in me? What do I need to leave at the altar? What do I need to leave at the at this point in the mountain so I can get to where you are? And take what you put in me to everybody else. Because 
what I've learned about mountain climbing is this, that you have to take off certain things. You have to take off certain weights. You have to take things off as you go up. Otherwise, it will slow you down because the air gets thinner. All you can do is get oxygen. A glory carrier understands that I need this to survive. And I trust what you have given me. I can be trusted with your glory. I'm not going to waste it. I'm not going to play around with it. Whatever sin is in my heart, I need you to deal with it so I can be used by you for your fame, not mine. So I can be used for your fame and not mine. That I don't need to pour out on everybody. You direct me how to use this. You direct me how to invest this, this impartation. You tell me how to do this. But, you, but that, that's the heart of the, of, of, of the carrier. The heart is the heart of God because you cannot have his power without his nature. You cannot have, you cannot have his mind without his nature. If, your fruit, if you're not producing the fruit of the spirit, guess what? You don't know his nature. We have become an unnatural church because we have forgotten the nature of God. Whew. Psalms 86, 11 to 13. I'm going to read it to you. God gave me this while we were sitting. I was sitting in the front row. He said this, teach me your way, Lord, and I will live by your truth. Give me an undivided mind to fear your name. I will praise you with all my heart, Lord my God. And I will honor your name forever. For your faithful love for me is great. And you rescue me, rescue my life from the depths of Sheol. Teach me. Somebody say, teach me. Your way, Lord. And I will live by your truth. It's, it's thick in here. It's thick in here. Here's the, God, God is shifting you. God is, God is shifting you to a, to a deep, to that deeper level of maturity. Because what we are about to walk into as the American church, we're about to walk into a season of great repentance. Yes. The hand of judgment is on America. Yes. Yes, but here's, everybody's been blaming the world. Judgment begins in the house of God. Judgment begins in the house of God. I'm going to say that again. Judgment begins in the house of God. And he is looking for people who are willing to learn and know his nature. I didn't come here to give you a truly prophetic word and make you feel good about yourself. I didn't come here to show off great exploits. I, I'm, I'm not anybody. I didn't come here to show how great I am, how accurate of a prophet I can be. God sent me all the way up here to tell you it's time to become carriers. It's time for you to wear my glory. Part of the reason what you tried to do failed is because you weren't at that point yet. I don't know who that's for. You literally tried to start something and it failed. And you're like, God, why did this fail? And God has been silent. The answer is it's time he's maturing you to handle the next harvest that is coming. 
He's maturing you. He's preparing you for the next harvest that is coming. There are some walls that, that need to be broken within the church. There are some walls that need to be broken in the church. And I, talk, I preached about unity last week at True Vision. And I talked about the isms, all the racism, sect, all those walls need to be broken in the church. Because what God sees from the American church, he allows us to tap into his presence because we're open to him. But yet he is grieved by the after effects. He's looking for people who are willing to carry his glory. Can I have someone move this, please? God is looking for someone. He's looking for that remnant who are willing to let themselves be broken. To be broken by the master. To be put back on the wheel. And be molded again. People who are willing because they know the nature of God. To be bridges. Mm, Jesus, thank you, Lord. To be bridges. God is grieved by us. God is grieved by his church. Because we have forgotten the responsibility. We have forgotten the responsibility of the gospel. What you prayed for 30 years ago, America, you got. You got what you wanted. But now you realize it wasn't my heart.